I want to talk to you today a little bit about criminal harassment under Section 264.1 of the Criminal Code. So first of all, this is a dual procedure offense, which means the Crown can elect by indictment for a very serious charge or elect summarily. Now, for an indictable charge, very serious stalking, harassing charge, uh, the maximum penalty is actually 10 years in prison, which is pretty, pretty high maximum. And of course, summarily is for a lesser type charge. So harassment can range a whole bunch of different activities from, you know, repeatedly stalking and following someone, repeated communications, watching and besetting their dwelling house, or, or threatening conduct uh, towards them over time. And it causes a lot of fear in people. There has to be reasonable fear in, in a person. And someone can have reasonable fear even with repeated communications, even if it's not threatening conduct within emails, for example. In the context of a break of a relationship, when someone just persistently keeps sending emails, at some point it becomes criminal harassment. It's hard to draw that line. You know, I've done many of these cases over the years, and I've seen so many cases on the line. You know it when you see it. Sometimes in that gray area, it's defendable. And you can win a potential case depending on how the client comes across and the accused. And sometimes the victim, I hate to say it, might be exaggerating their fear. Uh, it's not a situation, you know, a break of a relationship and a woman sends a man or vice versa six emails over the course of six days asking to get back together. Well, maybe, th maybe the person feels harassed, but is that really causing them fear? But at some point, it crosses a line. And, and simply as a criminal lawyer applying the case law, you're going to know it when you see it. So for cases that are not defendable, on a lesser scale offense, um, sometimes you can avoid a criminal record. Sometimes you can get a conditional discharge. Even sometimes you can get a peace bond and completely get it out of the system. But those are per pretty minor cases, to be honest with you, because the judges take this very seriously, as the courts do. And when it's real stalking and real harassment, which is causing a lot of fear, people often will face a short jail term. Even in those situations, you can sometimes avoid a jail term with a very good background, no prior criminal record, et cetera. There's also a separate charge in the criminal code, which is basically similar charge, to be honest with you. I think you could charge under the harassment section, but repeatedly making phone calls for the purpose of harassing someone is a similar type offense with, it, with, with its own similar type penalties. But it's really kind of analogous because harassment does encompass repeated communications as well. So it's an offense with a wide range of outcomes for consequences. It's an offense which is often defendable depending on whether that conduct has crossed the line. Obviously, if you follow someone on two or three different days, that's harassment in and of itself. But the, the things that are in the gray area are, are emails that are innocuous, but the volume becomes such that at some point it instills fear. So there you have it. We, we represent a lot of clients on this particular charge and we wanted to, I wanted to share with you today uh, exactly what it's all about. Thank you for watching our video. We are absolutely committed to bringing you the best possible criminal and DUI educational videos. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've been charged with a criminal offense in Ontario and require our services, please click on the link in the description below.